Welcome to episode 72 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 71, our guest was Quinn Curtis discussing disruptive marketing. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses identifying your money. Our guest is Sari Ibrahim, founder of Financial Asset Protection, based out of the greater Chicago area. Sari Ibrahim's business is to help high net worth individuals, real estate investors, business owners, and retirees grow and protect their wealth predictably and safely. As a financial consultant, health and life agent, Sari has cultivated a reputation for putting his clients first, no matter what. He prides himself on attending all client meetings without exceptions or preconceived ideas to ensure that he is solving his clients' problems. That's the value Sari offers. Let's welcome Sari Ibrahim. Sari, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, the business of business. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. Sari, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming the founder of Financial Asset Protection? Yeah, definitely. So um, my journey started about almost eight years ago uh, in Chicago, where I was doing my uh, MBA program. That's that's also where I'm from, from Chicago, Illinois. And I was about halfway through my MBA program and looking for kind of different all, all different types of work. And I started working in the insurance field. My first job was at Allstate Insurance, and I really enjoyed working there. Um, and then it led me to starting my own practice about a, a year later. So I was about uh, a, a year later, I started a, a company, Financial Asset Protection. And the focus back then was mostly around insurance, mostly life insurance and health insurance. And then we added in the bank on yourself concept. So I became a bank on yourself professional, went through the training and then became a bank on yourself professional. And I'm really, another thing, another thing I do is I read a lot of books, especially books around financial literacy and financial freedom. And as you can see behind me, you know, there's the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, as well as the Cash Flow Game, uh, invented by uh, Robert Kiyosaki. And uh, that's kind of the, the my mission in life, is to escape the rat race, escape the matrix, as you call it, or as it's called, and 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 live on uh, on my own financial terms in, in financial freedom. So, And I want to help other people do the same thing using various strategies, one of those strategies being the bank on yourself concept. Well, there you go. That's a great lead in. So our topic is your finances. How do you help people think like a bank? Yeah, definitely. So that is the name of our podcast. It's called Thinking Like a Bank Podcast. And what we do is we introduce different things. Like if you were to think of like a bank, an actual bank, and you were to think about uh, how much money they make, how much money they have. It's typically much greater than other businesses. I know right now, 2023 is a really, it's a, it's a shaky period for banks, but still overall banks have and, and make the most money. And, and really when you look deeper into a bank, it's really, um, it's, it's more of a conduit, meaning that it connects one person and then it connects another person. So it's usually in the middle. That's really the definition of like a bank people looking to store money and then people looking to borrow money or in, invest money. And the bank is typically in the middle of that and they make the most money. It's the most lucrative business. But the point of the podcast and and my brand is not to just not to get people in the banking industry or to start a literal, you know, a literal FDIC insured bank. It's meant to um, use the same thinking principles of duplicating yourself in your business, being more scalable, saving on taxes, you know, even sometimes eliminating certain taxes growing wealth regardless of market conditions, being able to access wealth at any point, regardless of the economy or your or your financial situation. Those are the things that, well, that's what it means to think like a bank, to be able to do all those things in any situation, regardless of any external factors. That's, I think, what thinking like a bank is and what we, what we help people uh, to do. Well, how do you assist your clients with their financial strategies? Yeah, so we have um, we have a pretty um, tight process. So we would one of the first things we do is we have a financial analysis meeting. 
So this is where we get to know the client, get to know their financial situation. Like we, we'd ask like how much they made last year, this year, are they married, single, do they have kids, grandkids? Uh, where are they located in the country? Um, you know, if are they real estate investors? Do they want to be real estate investors? We we, get, we gather as much in, information about their financial life as possible, and it's really not supposed. It's not supposed to be so much of a data gathering meeting. It's supposed to be more of a getting to know the client and what they want to accomplish financially. Because if I asked you, Brian, right now, like, what do you think about ret- what what retirement means to you? It would be different for you than somebody else. Like everyone has their own definitions of money, retirement, wealth, financial freedom. So that's what the that's what the first meeting is meant to do. It's meant to identify those meanings for that person and their and their needs and wants. And then after that, we would set up a solution meeting where it takes usually one or two meetings after one or two weeks after that, we would set up a, a meeting and we go through the solution. Like you know, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, this is what we've uh, determined. We determined that you, uh, this strategy would help you. Or and it's also not so much of us just prescribing it, but also the client. You know, we're asking the client, how do you feel about this? And if the client's just like, you know, I don't, I just really don't want to do this. We're a completely independent agency. We're not tied to one concept or one company or one thing. We could, we could help a client in any situation, whether it's passively investing in real estate, whether it's using cash value, life insurance and annuities, or if if they really want to use mutual funds and index funds, we can help them in any, any given way. Um, we're very flexible as far as the client comes first and we're, we're, and we don't really like to take the role of financial advisor. We like to take the role of more as financial coach. We're speaking with Sari Ibrahim, founder of Financial Asset Protection. Sari, we're in uncertain financial times. How do you solve for today's financial needs and tomorrow's wealth without speculation or the market volatility? Yeah, that's yeah. So it's a, typically a Wall Street thing, right? To to convince people that you have to put your money at risk for it to grow. And I think I, I see I see both conceptually. I see it where it's like your high risk, high returns, low risk, low returns. But I think that there are certain things you could do strategically that could increase your returns while while mitigating your your risk. And I think this is where the thinking like a bank aspect comes in. Is it's, it doesn't always have to be high risk, high return, low risk, low return. It could be you you have returns and you're increasing the returns while mitigating risk. And how how you can do that is typically using uh, different tools and different strategies. Like one of them being using our the bank on yourself concept. I already talked about that. Using that strategy could help you mitigate the risk on your investments. So this way you can help increase the anticipated or expected rate of return while also lowering the amount of risk because the bank on yourself policy itself is not connected to the market. It's not impacted by market conditions. So you could use this as a strategy to increase your rate of return while lowering. And that's the, and that's that's really what you want to do in uncertain times. You don't want to just go with the flow. If the, if the market is down, so are you. And if the market is up, so are you. You want to figure out a way where you're always up, regardless of, of what the market is doing. How do you help business owners and full-time employees with creating their own sources of financing while also growing safe and predictable wealth? Yeah, this is this is a really important topic too because business owners are constantly relying on banks and in essence it's almost like business owners are working for the banks like they're going out they're doing all the work and the bank gets paid either way when you take out lines of credit and business loans the bank gets paid whether your business is up or down they still you're still obligated to pay that and most of that debt is personally guaranteed so you have to pay it back regardless of your business performance we ha- we help clients avoid that unnecessary risk by becoming their own source of financing which is another tool or a benefit of the bank on yourself concept is that you have this bank on yourself type whole life policy you could fund it it grows guaranteed regardless of market conditions and then you can borrow against it to use for your business or use for essentially anything you want so that's how we help business owners become their own sources of financing sorry what results have you seen with businesses and individuals that actually implement your recommendations yeah, I think that you know it takes time. It takes a, a few years to implement this and get the hang of it and build up cash value. But once uh, a lot of our clients who are already doing this, we're projected in the next ten years they won't need to go to banks again because they'll have enough cash and reserves to be able to leverage their policies. We've already seen clients pay off a lot of debt using the strategy, so you could use it as a way to eliminate other debts you have by insourcing that debt into your policy. So you become the bank, in other words, instead of you paying every month to your credit cards and lines of credit and other debt you have, others that you're servicing, you could then recoup those costs back into your policy. So we've seen that, and that's something more on the short-term side we can help clients with. And of course, on the long-term side, completely eliminate banks on the long-term side. We're speaking with Sari Ibrahim, founder of Financial Asset Protection. Sari, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you asked me a lot of good questions. Um, 
there's I, I want to also mention that there are a lot of tax benefits with using the strategy. I'm not a tax professional myself, but talk to your tax professional about this. There are a lot of tax strategies you could use with the bank on yourself strategy. If you reach out to me, we can go through some different scenarios. Also, if you reach out to me, I'll send you a free copy of Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, which is essentially the introduction to this whole concept. The book is called Becoming Your Own Banker. And I can send you a free copy of that if you reach out for a free 15-minute call. That's great. How can people get in contact with you, Sorry. Yeah, easiest way, go to thinkinglikeabank.com. That's thinkinglikeabank.com. And then you can schedule a 15-minute call and I'll send you that free book. Sorry, thank you for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thanks, Brian. My sincere thanks to Sari Ibrahim. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF-ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Sari, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol's on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 73, our guest will be Jonathan Hensley, discussing digital transformation. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCFORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.